Welcome in, everybody. Glad you're with us. Interleague Baseball on MLB The Show. It's the Seattle Mariners going up against the Colorado Rockies. John Shabby and Chris Singleton with you. Singing a guy who could change this game with one swing of the bat. Michael Tolia, he of course leads their team in home runs. Yeah, Boog, he's been such a force at the plate, and it seems like every time he connects, the ball is traveling out of the ballpark. So when you have such a threat like that, other guys in the lineup should get good pitches to hit because they're trying to get those outs instead of having to face him in a big situation. Well, that 12 to 6 curveball explodes out of the hand, and because he's able to throw the high fastball at the top of the strike zone for a strike, hitters commit to that pitch, and before they know it, they're swinging over the top of that curveball. Doyle hauls it in, and there's one away. And now we check out the Mariners lineup. One guy leading the way offensively for this club right now, Cal Raleigh. Oh, Boog, he's got great power just to every section of the ballpark, man. I love watching guys like this who can give it a ride to the opposite field or go dead center. I mean, that's really hitting. When you can hit and drive the ball up the middle other way, look out. Keep an eye out on this guy when he digs in. I wouldn't be surprised to see him launch one in this game. The wind and the pitch. On the ground to third. It's through for a hit. So they get a man aboard with a one-out single. There's something about pulling one down the line and shooting it through the infield that's just so satisfying as a hitter. It's just fun turning on a pitch like he did right there. The batter now, Jorge Polanco. That one ripped right center field. Doyle going back on this one. And that one is off the wall. Hanniger, round second on his way to third. Lead runner holds at third. So two runners in scoring position and just one out. No, no waiting around right there. He was ready to swing it on the first pitch. Just a cookie down the middle. I mean, those are the ones you dream about. The ones in the cage, you're just hoping you get in the ball game. Right down the middle, not a whole lot of velocity right on top of it. Mitch Garver up to hit here. Golden opportunity right here. And the first pitch misses for ball one. Second and third here. One away. Just missed. He's got a base open, so the pressure to come in and really attack this hitter, not as great as it would be if the bags were sacked. Swing and a drive, deep right field. Can't get to it as it drops into the corner. The run scores from second, and they take a two-run lead. And he's got a double. Well, when you fall behind in the count, you've got to come into the zone, and then guys have a better chance of hitting the ball hard like he did right there. One out, runner at second. And now the first baseman, Ty France. That one fouled off. down the line and now maybe extra bases run comes in from second and they lead by three and that's a double well done drives in the run that pretty much split the zone down the middle and those are the ones where you got to make them pay man at second with one away and here is Cal Raleigh. And 
a foul ball. Swing and a high fly ball to left. Jones under it. Hauls it in, and there's two away. Just pulled off of it a little bit right there. That front shoulder coming open instead of staying closed. If he does that, he's going to be able to go up the middle the other way with some authority instead of a fly out to left. Here's Dylan Moore. In there for strike one. When we're struggling out there on the mound, hitters know that there'll be plenty of opportunities within the at bat to try to get something to hit hard. Man on second, two down. That catches the outside corner. 0 and 2. And a bat like this is almost over as it begins. In this situation, you have no idea what the next pitch is going to be. You just got to hope that you can make contact. Kicks and fires. Gets a piece, and it stays 0-2. Man at second. He swings and drives one out to deep left field. That's back. And gone. And they add a couple more. It's five zip. And that shot makes their grip on the lead even tighter. Man, he just barely got that one out of here, and you've got to love the effort and left to try and bring it back. He had a good shot at it, just couldn't quite pull it off. It would have been a stunner if he did. Here's Luis Arias. First pitch doesn't find the zone. Well, it's not the inning he was planning on to begin this start, but you've got to find a way to shake things off and give your team some length and put up some zeros. Wouldn't chase that time. 2 0. Next Three. offering is in for a strike. Good oh, eye right there. And now the lefty. And yeah, there's ball four. Pretty easy walk right there. Last pitch wasn't even much to think about. Jonathan Classe up next for the Mariners. That one pushed foul out of play off to the left. Here's the 0 2. Slider misses outside. Bounced up the middle. That'll end the inning after a lot of scoring. But nine batters hit in the inning. Five come around to score. On to the bottom of the first. It's the M's five, and the Rockies coming up.
Back here at Coors Field on the hill for the Mariners, Bryce Miller. What do you have on him? Well, he's not a rookie, but still very young in this game, learning his craft. I think the key is getting consistent reps and the opportunity to develop his stuff. Looking forward to watching him pitch in this one. Bottom of the first. And now, Charlie Blackman. The designated hitter, Charlie Blackman. Why to kick the pitch? That one at 95 missed up top. And that is ball one. And Inside another ball. ball. Next yeah. offering is in for a strike. One way to make a guy real uncomfortable at the plate is pound him inside with good velocity. They're doing that right here. The 2 1. Blind into right. Makes the grab one down. Time to check out the Rockies lineup. Singy, they got their work cut out for them. Down a busload already in this one. And a manager does not want to see his hitters going to the plate swinging like it's a home run derby. He wants hitters to put together quality at bats, play the game that you've been playing and that you've been taught to play with this organization and go out there and move the line. If you do that, you're going to score some runs. Maybe you don't win this ball game, but at least you have some momentum to carry into the next one. Over to first. Here tonight, an efficient start to the home first, two away. Ryan. Ryan McMahon steps McMahon. to the plate. And when you talk about elite defensive third baseman, this guy is at the top of the list. That well, one not close. Ball one. This guy plays third base like he's a shortstop, and he welcomes the difficult play. Can throw hey. from so many different angles and makes really tough plays look very easy. Two down, nobody on. Oh, can't pick it up cleanly. And with the inning still alive, here comes the heart of the order. Everything came together for him. Pretty tough for the infielders to do anything with that one. He pulled it hard into the outfield. And even when you keep it on the ground, it feels great when you hit a missile like that. And now it's Elias Diaz. Fouled off left side. McMahon off of first with two away. Strike two. So what are the skills you look for that make a really good defensive third baseman that elite? Well, but one of the things I think about immediately are just the feet. Does he have good feet? Is he able to quickly react? And when you have good feet, you've got soft hands. And soft hand defenders are able to make tough plays look easy. Now five ball to right center. It falls in, and that's a base hit. And that'll put runners at the corners with two away. That is good. No left field. Now here's Nolan Jones. And that's off the inside edge. And that's ball one. The pitch. Starting to go after it. Now we'll look down to third. No swing. Right through there for a strike. Runners on first and third. Two away. Righty delivers. Keeps the at-bat going with a foul ball. And now it's filled up. And a pitch. 
foul ball, and it remains a full count. Two on, two outs. And that one ripped into right. Fair ball. One run is in, and that rolls into the corner. Around third. All oh, the throw is over his head. He got a pitch he could get to out front, kept his back through the ball, and didn't pull off or roll his hands over. And that allowed him to rip that ball down the line for the double. So, a man aboard. And now here's Elauris Montero. First pitch, and he just misses. Well, with this many pitches thrown here in this first inning, I mean, you're giving the other team a really good look. He's going to have to find a way to get some weak contact, maybe a swing and miss, get into that dugout and hit the reset button. Righty to the plate. Pulls that one foul. Two outs and one in scoring position. On the ground right side, and that's just foul. Two outs. Battling here as he fouls it away. And here it comes. And a swing and a miss inning over and it could have been worse but they'll pick up a couple runs here both coming on this two run double it's now 5-2 you're watching Major League Baseball exclusively on the show back here in Denver top of the second here's the Mariners leadoff man Julio Rodriguez Rodriguez well, after scoring runs, this is where you're looking for that shutdown inning. Get that hot team back in there to swing the bats. And there's a foul ball. The 0 1. Foul ball there. And that one almost hit him. Struck him out swinging. Chased the fastball up the ladder for strike three. Oh, there's a small sigh of relief right there. I mean, just to keep that speed off the base pass, it's not just the pitcher. It's other guys that have to think about it from your infielders, have to think about that runner potentially stealing, but also be in position to make a play. As an outfielder, you're thinking about a base hit to the outfield. I got to get to it quickly to try to keep this guy from taking an extra base. So I think everyone just a little more relaxed that he didn't reach base. Just missed. Patrick Johnson no calling the balls and strikes. Pretty standard zone for Johnson. Sometimes he might get a little jumpy, a little excited and expand the zone, but usually you at least feel like the pitcher on the mound is earning it. And that's important because you got to make players earn it. Base is empty one away here at the top of the second. That Eight, one in for two. a strike, two and two. What about some no-nos? Like, you can't call the umpire blue the way you do in Little League or high school, right? <laughs> yeah. Even in the minor leagues, you'll learn quickly. Uh, you call the umpire blue. You better learn his name. And uh, that's just part of being a professional player and even a major league player. Two outs, base is empty. Jorge Polanco up next for the Mariners. A double and a run scored his first time up. In there, and it's 0-1. As the game has moved along, we see more and more information supplied by teams about the umpires. I've been in clubhouses where they have pictures of all four umpires, nicknames, hometowns, and as well, hobbies listed, just so you can kind of small talk the umpire a little bit. <laughs> That's great. Just misses the mark outside the zone. Two outs, space is empty. 
Yeah. And a nice inning of work there as he sets him down. One, two, three. Impeccable command in that one. Three batters, three strikeouts. That's electric stuff out there on the mound. Bottom of the second. So in now for Colorado, Brenton Doyle. Miller back to work. And that's outside. Ball one. The line of the pitch. Swing and a foul straight back. The pitch. Down the line. And that lands in no man's land. A foul ball. And the right hander deals. Lined, and that's a base hit. So a man on base to start the inning. <laughs> so important to get into the fielding position after you deliver that baseball. That is a scary one. Watch your lips. Here's Michael Tolia. And a good eye there. Here comes a pinch. Right through there for a strike. One ball, one strike. The Mariners leading by three. Bottom half of inning number two. Popped up to the left. Into foul ground. And there's one down. Batting the second baseman, Alan Trejo. Trejo digging in for the Rockies. Outside corner, strike one. Cold night tonight, Boog, and that's a pretty firm fastball right there. I tell you what, memories of getting jammed, they creeping into my mind right now. That one finds the zone, and it's 0-2. That front door slider is such a devastating pitch. You don't want to get beat by the inside fastball, so you cheat a little bit, and then by the time it gets there, dives, but it kicks off his glove. Gets it there in time, though. So a tough play, but they do get out number two. Great job by the second baseman right there. Quick reaction to dive, knock that ball down, and big leaguers just don't panic, not the good ones. He gets up, makes the play, really good throw over to first base. That's the kind of composure that you want to see from a guy in that position. Now it's Charlie Blackman. And that's outside, and it's one to know. Man on second, two down. On to France. That's the third out, inning over. The Rockies strand one, they trail at 5 2. set for the start of the inning. In now is the Mariners' DH, Mitch Garver. With this kind of lead, he can swing freely, try to hit the ball out of the park, do what he loves to do. The lefty fires. 
That oh misses, my. and that's ball one. Way that to lay off that fastball up right there. You're looking for something you see well that you can handle, but you also hey. have to keep the discipline so that you're not popping up pitches that are just a little too high. The pitch. Hey. Fights that one away, still one and two. And That's another ball. ball. Gets a piece there, we'll do it again. Swings and sends a rocket to right. Tolia makes the catch, and there's one gone. The first base is number 23. Tie. And up next for Seattle, Ty France. Doubled in his first A.B. Just nope, missed. Good. A little bit high, maybe. And now 2-0. Oh. Looks like he's being a little cautious with him in this at bat after doubling the first time up. Doesn't want to make another mistake. Swing and a high fly ball down the left field line, but hooking foul. Next That's offering four. is down low. Now three and one. Check swing. Now we'll look down to first. No, he held back. That's ball four. Well, he tried to nibble right there and just missed his spot. Hitter didn't offer at it. Now he has somebody to worry about over at first. Stepping in, Cal Raleigh. Flied to left his first time. There goes the runner. Out in front and foul to the left side. And the pitch on the ground a second might be two off balance feed there's one and that's two so they make short work of them there we head down to the home half of inning number three it's the M's five and the Rockies two Set for the bottom of the third. So in now for Colorado, Ezekiel Tovar. The right-hander back to work. There's a strike. That's a strike. Oh, a two now. Just misses with that one. One ball, two strikes, the count. And a ball evens the count. And the righty deals. Shoots a line drive single into right center. So a runner aboard to start the inning. Well, that was one of those high percentage advantage counts where batting averages are just so much higher. Really good swing right there. He got a pitch that he knew he could handle, allowed himself to stay back just a tad bit longer, and he hit the ball on the screws. Ryan McMahon digging in for the Rockies. Singled and scored his first time. And the pitch is outside, ball one. 
If you're going to get something going, this is the time to do it. You get the leadoff man on. Everybody's got to look over the shoulder and say, I'm just going to keep the line moving. Don't try to do too much. And a pitch. Ball two. With all these Rockies doing a great job, Boog, of just waiting for the right pitch to come their way. And I'm seeing very patient at bats out of them. They're doing a good job of working the pitch count, and they've been able to push a couple of runs across to score as well. Runner takes off. Pitch in for a strike. And safe. It's a stolen base. Well, we all know this team is struggling right now, and sometimes you just got to do something different to generate some offense. A little more aggressive right there to put the pressure on the opponent. We'll see if it pays off on the scoreboard for this team. Man at second. Runs it up to 96 to record the punch out. No, just a beautiful fastball on the inside corner for that backwards K right there. I think the hitter saw it all the way coming from that opposite arm angle. So I got to think he was looking away and just got locked up by the hard stuff boring in on his hands. Elias Diaz digging in for the Rockies. One for one with a single and a run scored so far. Just missed. Still relatively early, but with the pair of runs already on the board, the ripple effect of that high pitch count might set them up to do more damage later in this game. Fouled off. He was late. One out and a runner at second here in the last half of the third. Pitch misses there, and a count two and one. Right through there for a strike. Slider misses outside. Stays alive. At the belt and fires. Polanco gets it to first, and he's out. Now back, left field. Nolan. Nolan Jones digs in now. He drove in two with a double his first time up. Lace down the line. This looks like extra bases. The run scores from third, and it's now a two-run game. In safely with a double, his second of the day. Takes an inside pitch and just lays it over there to left field and that's all he had to do is get something to the outfield grass to push that run across and here's the first baseman Elauri's Montero 0 for 1 he struck out swinging last time and that one fouled off Tying run at the plate. Way one outside. One. one ball, one strike. Swing and a miss, and that's strike two. Well, that's that slurf right there. He threw it extremely well. And talk about just a ton of breaks. So tough to get that barrel to. Two outs. And a swing and a miss. That ends the inning and stops things from getting out of hand. Well, this guy competes hard. We see the emotion there. I love it. Great job of getting out of the jam.
as we go to the top of the fourth. Now it's the shortstop, Dylan Moore. And a pitch. Swings here and blasts one left field. That one carrying. And it's into the bleachers. Out of here. Another homer. His second home run of the game. And they add a run. It's 6 3. When you're lacking velocity, it's so critical that you move the ball around, change speeds, even try to trick the hitter at times. But when you give up a home run right there, manager doesn't have a lot of patience because the velocity is not there to overcome and get the swing and miss. And stepping in for the Mariners, Luis Urias. There's a swing and a drive could be extra bases now he'll turn for second and that's a two bagger couldn't have timed it up any better than that nice job of driving that pitch the other way on a line you know hitters they take so many reps in the cages working on going to the opposite field and it doesn't always translate into the game but right there it did and he did it perfectly Here's the left fielder, Jonathan Classe. He's 0 for 1. In hey. for a strike, 0 and 1. Well, these Mariners doing a good job of simply getting the bat on the ball in this game, and the numbers back that up. And here's a stat for you, Boog. They're making contact with more than 85% of the pitches that they're swinging at. It's pretty special stuff. Not so good if you're out there on the mound. Base stock center field. Could be extra bases. And it gets by him. The run comes in to score from second. It's seven to three. Just a very nice approach and swing right there to use the big part of the field. Everything was on time. He stayed balanced through the entire swing and just launched that one into center. Black towards the mound, and we're going to see a pitching change here. Austin Gomber won't go any further tonight, and he leaves a runner at third, so we'll see how the next guy deals with that when we get back. The new pitcher in the game, Ryan Feltner. He's making his fourth appearance of the season. And now it's Julio Rodriguez. Outfield playing very deep, not wanting anything over their heads. Ball and that's outside. Down. And that is ball one. Ripped into right center. Base hit. In comes the run from third. And the lead is up to five. Just so sound in his mechanics. Hits against a firm front side. And the hands just continue to carry through the middle of the field. Now batting Mitch Hanniger. Singled and scored back in the first. He's one for two. That oh, one way inside. The pitch. Just off the outside edge. Two and oh. With the big bats coming up and a home run already surrendered, he's really going to have to execute against these next couple of batters. Two and oh to Cal. Here it comes. And a foul ball.
Foul ball, another 2-2 upcoming. Pickoff move to first, and he's back in safely. Base runner with a one-way lead right there. All he's trying to do is get a look at the pitcher's move. Had no intent of stealing on that pitch. And he deals. The punch out there. That's the first out in the top of the fourth. The batter. Man at first. Jorge Polanco Jorge. getting ready to hit. One for two. And first offering is fouled off. Part of the order coming through now, and with one home run already in this inning, they're definitely looking to do some more damage. Just oh, missed. Out. Nasty backdoor slider. There's really nothing you can do with that if you swing at it, so it's no, a good safe. take by him. Move over to first, trying to keep him close. Rodriguez stands at first with one out. And there he goes. Strike in there. Throw to second. Save. That was close, but StatCast shows us why he so often seems to be on the safe side of these steal attempts, Chris. Yeah, you see that plus speed, and he needed every last bit of it to swipe that bag. Such a threat on the bases. And another ball. Very high with that one. Full count now. Cuts on it and misses. That's a strikeout. Chase the fastball up the ladder for strike three. Now it's the DH. Mitch Garver drove in two runs on a double back in the first. He's one for two. Out towards left center. Sizing this one up. And that'll do it. So they get three runs on four hits. One was the solo homer. On now to the bottom of the fourth. It's the Mariners eight and the Rockies three. And we're back, ready to go, bottom four. So in now for Colorado, Granton Doyle. And the right hander back to work. And a foul ball. Oh one one now. Late that time, and it's strike two. I think he was sitting off speed there. Struck him out looking. Well, just excellent location on that inside I'll fastball. Really locked him up. No and it's a hitter. It's not typically what you're looking for. You're trying to protect away and then in. So you can be a little bit tardy with two strikes. Hard to tell if he was fooled or if he thought it would be called a ball. But either way, that's a really nice pitch. Tolia batting with one down. Takes a strike. Popped up, foul territory behind the play. Drifts towards it, calls it in, two away. Well, that's a frustrating into the at bat for the hitter right there. Down I mean, that pitch was right baseman. down the middle. Down I think low. he got a little too excited, came out of his mechanics, and instead of driving that ball somewhere, he popped it up. Unfortunate for him. Trail, batting for the second time, and that's strike one. Good oh, eye in that spot. Two down, nobody on. And it's fouled away. One and two now. Got him swinging. Rockies are down quietly. Can't chip away at an 8-3 deficit.
We go to the top of the fifth, and now for Seattle, Ty France. Ty France. The wind and the pitch. That one ripped. This looks like extra bases. Around first, heading for two. In safely. It's a double and his second hit. Two hits for him in this one. Both for extra bases. Got to feel good about that. Just a solid swing right there. Caught it out front and ripped it into the outfield for the base hit. Those always feel great. And now the switch hitting catcher, Cal Raleigh. Way oh. high. Well, these Mariners, digging oh, into their no numbers, price. have to be happy with the swings they're taking. They've been absolutely smashing the baseball. They've racked up a bunch of hits, and eight have gone down for extra bases. That's in there. And the count even one and one. And eight extra base hits is a big number, and it's pretty clear the offense is just feeding off each other at this point. Confidence oh, is contagious. Rough. Next offering is down low. Sets him down looking. Couldn't pull the trigger on a fastball at the knees. Well, oh, definitely a borderline pitch right there, and he didn't look too convinced as he headed back to the dugout. You know, those are tough ones to let go as a hitter, but with the human umpire calling balls and strikes, it's always going to be on you to protect yourself with two strikes. Dylan Moore, the next to hit. And that's Ooh, off inside. the inside edge. And that's ball one. That one fouled off. Pitch is in there. And the count one and two. Man at second. Cuts and misses. It's a strikeout. The third base number 16, Luis Urias. And now Luis Urias. That misses the zone. Ball one. Runner at second. Two down. Next offering upstairs. Well, usually a high level of confidence when you're facing a young pitcher out there on the mound. In this situation, ahead 2-0. He's put himself in a really good spot. Right-handed reliever. Inside just missed. In for a strike. And a full count now. Count is three and two. Runner at second, two down. And we're at the top of the fifth. Out to short. Slings to first. Out number three. One left for Seattle, but they lead it 8 3.
Back now to start the bottom of the fifth and taking over on the mound, George Kirby. And you know, bullpen guys can struggle sometimes when they're called upon with big leads because it just doesn't have the same intensity as a tight game. So we'll see how sharp he is. Your mental toughness matters in situations like this as well. The pitch. Blackman stands in now and watches strike one. Out to center. Rodriguez settles under it. And makes the grab. And there's one away. Now batting. The shortstop. Next to hit for the Rockies, Ezekiel Tovar. There's a strike. Meanwhile, activity in the bullpen. Emerson Hancock appears to be getting ready for manager Scott Service. Stanek getting loose as well. And a swing and a miss. No ball, two strikes. Come on and miss. Struck him out. And they're down to their last out. Dominating strike out there on just three pitches, and that's what a good power pitcher can do to you. If he's hitting his spots, filling up the strike zone, sometimes he bats over before it really begins. McMahon in the box now. No balls and a strike. The M's leading by five. Last half of inning number five. Kirby is just one strike away upstairs. That's a really good job of laying off the 0-2 high fastball. Is going to make that pitcher really have to respect this hitter, even though he's behind in the count. Two outs. To the right side. Base hit. Kind of rolled over on this pitch a little bit, but he got enough behind it to shoot it through for a knock, and we'll take that anytime you can get him to find a hole. Elias Diaz digging in for the Rockies. This is a guy who is very highly regarded defensively. Fun to watch him control stuff behind the plate. Good game caller, good at framing, but it's that big arm that really stands out. And first offering is fouled off. When you got a catcher like this guy with a big arm like that behind the plate, it really shuts down the running game. Ground ball up the middle. Polanco. On to first. Ball game. After four wins in a row, you start to think a little bit that you're on a roll, and that's the momentum that just takes on a life of its own. Players start hitting up and down the lineup. You never know who's going to come up with the big hit, who's going to come out of the bullpen and get the big outs, but it's a good feeling, and you want to extend it. 8-3 the final in this one for Chris Singleton and our entire outstanding crew here at MLB The Show. I'm John Shambi. Thanks for joining us.